In a quiet stretch of countryside near Salinas on March 8, 1987, Ray Demmel and his wife Rita were making their way home to Seaside along Blanco Road near the Salinas River Bridge. What should have been a routine journey turned into a nightmare when tragedy struck. Ray was mercilessly killed by the roadside. The killer remained elusive for years. Fast forward 15 years and the case remained unsolved, leaving investigators stumped for answers. But in 2002, a glimmer of hope emerged. Detectives teamed up with a group of metal detector enthusiasts known as the Treasure Hunter Societies of Santa Clara Valley. Together, they scoured the area, unearthing crucial evidence buried beneath the ground. Among the findings were the murder weapon and other related items, reigniting the search for justice in Demel's case. What led to the breakthrough in solving Ray Demel's cold case after 15 years of silence? How did a group of metal detector enthusiasts become instrumental in uncovering buried evidence crucial to solving the mystery? Let's look into the details of this case. Salinas, California is a city nestled in the heart of Monterey County and has its own unique charm. Known for its agricultural richness, Salinas carries a down-to-earth vibe where friendly faces are a common sight. Life here offers a blend of recreational spots and historic sites, making it a family-friendly haven. In this tight-knit community, it's not uncommon for everyone to know their neighbor's name, fostering a sense of belonging. Safety is a hallmark of Salinas, where doors often remain unlocked in this close community. However, like any place, it has its share of avoidable spots. Little did the peace-loving residents of Salinas know that something troubling was about to happen. Raymond Edwin Demmel, born on April 30, 1939, in Olean, New York, had a story beyond the ordinary. He was a man with a golden heart who was raised by his parents, Edwin Joseph Demmel and Lola Eveline Hills. Raymond served his country as an Army veteran and later found his calling as a correctional officer at the Soledad Correctional Training Facility. Alongside his wife, Rita, Raymond cherished their family life. He was blessed with two daughters and a son. Beyond his duties, Raymond had a passion for family gatherings and treasured moments. He dreamed of creating lasting memories and watching his children grow into their own paths. Little did he or his loved ones know, the tranquility they enjoyed was about to be shattered, marking the beginning of a tragic journey they never saw coming. On the evening of March 8, 1987, Raymond and Rita Demmel drove along Blanco Road, headed home to Seaside. The night air hung heavy, and Raymond, feeling weary, decided to pull over near the Salinas River Bridge for a rest. The couple had been drinking, a fact that would later play a significant role in the events that unfolded. As Raymond dozed off, Rita grew concerned about her husband's well-being and attempted to signal passing motorists for help. Then, a young man, driving a white pickup truck, noticed their distress and pulled over to assist. However, as fate would have it, an unforeseen accident occurred. In the dimly lit clearing, the Demel's van nudged against the white pickup, triggering an unexpected reaction from the truck driver. Anger flared, and in a moment of blind rage, the driver drew his weapon and fired a single shot. The bullet found its mark, piercing Raymond Demel's chest. Rita, shaken by the sudden violence that had befallen her husband, wasted no time. With trembling hands, she reached for the nearest phone and dialed authorities, her voice trembling as she relayed the harrowing events that had unfolded by the roadside. 
With that call, the wheels of justice were set in motion, marking the beginning of a complex and tumultuous case that would grip the community of Seaside and beyond. He was in the driver's side. Uh, the side window of the driver's door uh, is uh, broken. I recall one bullet hole through the roof and uh, the other bullet had entered Mr. DeMell from the uh, left side. During their investigation into the killing, detectives stumbled upon a crucial piece of evidence, a man's address book left behind at the scene. An officer picks up a small address book dropped in the dust close to where the shooting occurred. Detectives wonder if the killer didn't perhaps drop the book as he fled the scene. This discovery led them to Norman Price Baird Jr., the book's owner, who quickly became the prime suspect. However, despite their suspicions, investigators hit a dead end due to a lack of additional evidence linking Baird to the crime. Adding to the complexity of the case, Baird's wife also came under suspicion, casting a shadow of doubt over the investigation for the next 15 years. As time passed, the case grew colder, and despite the detectives' best efforts, no breakthroughs emerged. The community was left haunted by unanswered questions and unresolved justice as the years went by and there were lesser chances of cracking the case. After the tragic murder of Raymond Demmel, his family struggled to come to terms with their loss. His widow and children eventually moved away from Seaside, each finding their own way to cope with the pain. Yontia Ambis, one of Demel's daughters, remained determined to seek justice for her father. She made regular calls to the Monterey County Sheriff's Office, hoping for updates on the case. But they rarely brought any news. Meanwhile, a year earlier in 1986, Raymond Jr., Demel's son, had tragically taken his own life, which was already a heavy burden of sorrow for the family to which a further layer had been added after Raymond's demise. Despite their personal struggles, the family's continued interest in the case, coupled with the memories of detectives who had worked on it since 1987, prompted the sheriff's office to revisit the investigation in the year 2000. The pivotal moment came when Fred De Los Santos, a newly appointed detective specializing in robbery and homicide, attended a seminar on solving cold cases. And he answered the door, I told him who I was and what I'm investigating, and told him that I needed him to come down to the office, and he agreed to do it. Armed with the Demel's file, De Los Santos embarked on a journey to Nevada to re-interview family members and revisit old leads. His dedication breathed new life into the stagnant investigation, offering hope to a family that had long awaited closure. As De Los Santos meticulously combed through the evidence and interviewed witnesses, the once forgotten case of Raymond Demel's murder began to resurface, inching closer to the truth with each passing day. The tireless efforts of both the family and law enforcement brought renewed attention to a case that had languished in the shadows for far too long. In 2002, Detective Fred De Los Santos took charge of Raymond Demel's cold case, hoping to finally bring closure to the family. He interviewed Rita Demel and other witnesses, including Ronald Hughes, an old friend of Norman Price Baird Jr., the prime suspect in the murder. Hughes, who had fallen out with Baird, revealed shocking information to De Los Santos. He confessed that Baird had visited him after the shooting, admitting to the crime, and left behind the murder weapon along with ammunition in a buried box at Strom Ranch near Old Stage Road. This revelation was significant, as there had been rumors in 1987 about Baird leaving the weapon with Hughes but he had refused to confirm it back then. 
Years later, Hughes, now burdened with a family and children, felt compelled to come forward with the truth. His friendship with Baird had soured over time, and he couldn't bear the guilt of keeping the secret any longer. Despite Hughes' cooperation, locating the buried evidence proved challenging. Hughes couldn't find the exact spot where he had buried the box, so De Los Santos turned to the Treasure Hunter Society of Santa Clara Valley for assistance. This group of metal detector enthusiasts eagerly took on the task, hoping to uncover the crucial evidence that had eluded investigators for years. On February 2, 2002, about 20 members of the Treasure Hunter Society descended upon the Strom Ranch spot. After a thorough search, they unearthed various items, including a locket, a turn-of-the-century bullet, and finally, the ammunition box, containing the key evidence in the demo murder. Detective Delos Santos IDs the ammo box as the one Ron buried more than a decade earlier. The discovery of the military-issued ammunition box was a breakthrough moment. After the metal box containing crucial evidence was discovered, detectives took it to the sheriff's crime lab for examination. Evidence technician Lauren Zeffro carefully inspected its contents, which included a Colt 45 handgun labeled Model of the U.S. Army, along with magazines for the firearm, a cleaning swab, and boxes of bullets still bearing price tags. Using advanced techniques and technology, Zephro managed to extract latent fingerprints from these items. These prints, preserved in the ground for 15 years, were meticulously analyzed and found to match those of Norman Baird, the prime suspect in Raymond Demmel's murder. The military-issued metal case effectively protected the evidence from deterioration, providing a controlled environment that allowed for accurate fingerprint analysis. In addition to the fingerprint match, ballistics testing conducted by a State Department of Justice criminalist confirmed that the handgun found in the box was indeed the weapon used to shoot Demel. Further investigation revealed that the legal owner of the gun had reported it missing in 1984. Coincidentally, around the time Baird moved into the man's former residence in Salinas, these findings solidified Baird's connection to the crime, leaving little doubt about his involvement. Baird, who had lived in the same house afterwards, became the prime suspect. Baird was taken into custody on June 19, 2002, finally facing the consequences of his actions. Just before his trial in 2004, he decided to plead no contest to second-degree murder, avoiding a lengthy legal battle. Raymond's widow, Rita Demmel, attended the sentencing, hoping for closure. Sadly, Rita passed away not long after. Her two daughters, however, continued to seek justice. They attended Baird's parole hearing, ensuring he remained behind bars. Norman Price Baird Jr. spent 15 years as a free man after fatally shooting correctional officer Raymond Demmel in 1987. Back then, Baird, a construction worker in his mid-40s, encountered Demmel's vehicle on the road. A bizarre accident ensued, leading Baird to fire a Colt 45 handgun through Demmel's window, ultimately killing him. Baird fled the scene, leaving behind only his address book. Baird had a history of drug use, as well as a criminal record, and remained silent about the murder, even during his trial in 2004, where he pleaded no contest. The prosecutor, Cynthia Jewett, was prepared for trial, gathering 27 witnesses, including the first motorist to stumble upon the crime scene. Yet to everyone's surprise, Baird opted not to stand trial, pleading no contest instead. While this spared the Demmel family the agony of a trial, it also denied them closure about the events of that tragic evening in 1987. Sentenced to 15 years to life, 
he wasn't eligible for parole until 2021. Daughter Yuntina Ambis, accustomed to hearing of no developments in the case, found solace in the newfound evidence, though the plea brought mixed emotions for the family. The trial could have offered valuable insight into the mind of the gunman, shedding light on his motivations and actions. Like many victims, you want to have that opportunity to sit down and have a conversation with the person, expressed Ambis. It's just so senseless to me, she added, reflecting on the tragedy of her father's senseless murder. The dedication of both law enforcement and ordinary citizens like Ronald Hughes and the Treasure Hunter Society played a pivotal role in cracking the case. Do you think a trial would have provided valuable insight into the gunman's motives? What do you think about the plea deal in this case? Let us know your thoughts in the comments.